Okay. All right. Well, if you haven't already, turn in your Bibles to Deuteronomy, fifth book into the Old Testament. And you might be asking, well, why Deuteronomy? Why don't we start in Genesis? (laughs) Uh, Good question. Um, Primary reason is I'm so excited to teach this book, finally. Um, When I was out in California, I taught through Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and I just started the book of Deuteronomy, and I was enjoying it so much. And then I got called to come out to this church, and uh, I haven't been able to get back to it ever since, and I've just been dying to, because it's such a great practical book for the church today. I mean, you think about it, here's this book, um, you know, we're talking over 3,000 years ago, this book was written. And, you know, most people think today, if they're not believers, if they haven't, you know, uh, if they don't really understand what the scriptures are about, they, they find it very difficult to relate to those first five books of the, the Old Testament, the law, uh, the Torah. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but obviously, you know, God has written this for us and he's given it to us. And, and so, you know, it, it's something that is absolutely relevant to us. And as we find the things that are being dealt with in the book of Deuteronomy are things that we deal with every day. There are things that we deal with every day. And that mainly comes down to, do I want to do what God tells me to do? Or do I want to do what I want to do? Do I trust God's word enough to just do what he tells me to do and follow through and be obedient to his word? Or do I just want to you know, do what I want to do, and uh, or maybe I'm afraid to do what God's word tells me to do, and that was certainly the the um, issue with the Israelites as they were uh, going into the land, as they were going into the promised land there. And so, um, the book of Deuteronomy, I have a crazy graphic on here. Let me explain that for just a second. This idea of access denied—that's what I'm calling the uh, the whole series going through there, because. If they lived in today's world where we have passports and and those kind of things, they certainly would have had stamped upon their passports access denied. They were denied access into the promised land. God had given it to them and he had told them, hey, I want you to go on in there and possess that land. And because of their disobedience, they said basically, no way, we're not going to do it. We don't trust you enough to protect us enough to go in there and take possession of that land. And God said, okay, fine, you're not going in then. You're going to end up dying out there in that wilderness as a result of your disobedience. And so you can look at some verses. um, I guess I have to turn that on, don't I, before it'll work. Uh, One verse within the book of Deuteronomy itself that we're going to look at next week. We're not really going to get into the actual text this week. I want to do just a little bit of an introduction. But there you see in Deuteronomy 135, uh, him relaying what had been said to them 40 years earlier. The Lord said to the people, Surely none of these men of this evil generation shall see that good land of which I swore to give your fathers. You're access denied. You're not going to make it in. You're not going to get in because of your disobedience, because of your disbelief, your distrust in what the Lord has said. And how sad that is, how truly sad that is. And it's so interesting to me that 40 years is the, the number of years that they would wander around out in that wilderness. Because, you know, um, the, the Bible seems to indicate that an age of understanding what good and evil is, is, is probably around 20 is, is kind of what the Old Testament uh, seems to teach. 14, possibly you can make an argument for 14. Um, but, you know, it's an interesting thing that you get to about 20 years old, you start having families, you, you're involved in your, your employment, whatever your job is in life. And uh, from that point on, for the next 40 years, you're living your life, you're raising your family, you're doing the productive things uh, of your life. Uh, 40 years, they wandered around out in that desert until they all died off. They all died off in that 40-year time frame. They wasted their lives. And it's so applicable to us because so many times, even Christians completely waste their life 
those productive years of their lives when they could really be doing something great for the Lord. Then they can go, be going out and be missionaries. And obviously you can do that when you're over 60 as well. Um, but the, the idea there is during those very, very productive years of life, you're just spending it on yourself. And, and that's what people do. We spend those productive years on ourselves rather than taking the first fruits of our labor and giving it to the Lord, saying, Lord, this is the prime of my life. What do you want me to do with this life? How do you want me to behave? How do you want me to live my life? What do you want me to do? How do you want me to serve you uh, in the strength uh, that I have in these years of my life? And uh, for those people, they decided... You know, there's no way. There's no way we're going to go into that land because of that fear. They looked and they said, well, you know, those people are, we're like grasshoppers in their sight. And uh, I know the Lord said he'd protect us. He'd fight our battles for it. He had already fought their battles for them and proved to them on many, many occasions that he was well suited to provide and protect for them and to win those battles for them. Uh, But again, disbelief, disbelief obedience ruled the day and they didn't get in. And so as we kind of go into this book, that is really the theme of the book is, is obedience to the Lord, obedience to the Lord. And we'll talk more about why they're sitting there. But I wanted to talk a little bit about for those who maybe aren't well-versed in the Bible, maybe you're a new believer, uh, maybe you haven't read the Bible through all the way. Why do we read the Old Testament in the first place, what's the purpose of us reading these old books? Anybody want to throw something out there? Come on. Points ahead to Jesus. Points ahead to Jesus. Absolutely. That's a great point. Absolutely. Examples, right? What else? That's right. That's right. Okay. So those are, those are absolutely, it's God's word. <laughs> you know, it's the word's of God himself. Why wouldn't we read his word? Well, that's old stuff though. That doesn't apply. Well, it's still God's word. You know, we are living in the New Testament era for sure, the new covenant era where uh, we are living under the blood of Jesus. Uh, we are saved by our faith in Jesus. And, and certainly we want to study those scriptures that deal with that. But as you said, the Old Testament points ahead to those things. They give us the insights into the New Testament that we need to help us understand more fully why God was doing the things he was doing through the nation of Israel, why God uh, did all those things, and certainly the insight into the New Testament. Now, I'm just throwing up three here. There are many reasons for us to study the Old Testament. Uh, it's God's word. It gives us great insight into the, Old Te- into the New Testament. And also, it is our example, as you said. It's an example. All these things, they're good examples for us, just like we talked about with the discipleship training. You know, there are things in the Old Testament that show us, hey, don't do that. If you do those kind of things, look what's going to happen to you. It's happened before. Don't think you'll be immune from, you know, suffering the same things that those people back there did. Uh, You're not special. You'll suffer the same kind of things. Now, on the other side of that coin, the good things that the, the examples we see in the Old Testament uh, we will share in those blessings as well. As, as we are obedient to the Lord, as we are obedient to his word, we will share in the blessings that come along with that obedience as well. So those things are examples. How do we know that? Well, the New Testament tells us in 1 Corinthians 10, 11, now all these things, he had just gone through and give you a litany of, of examples of Old Testament things that had happened. And then he says, All these things happened to them as examples and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. You're not any different than those people that lived 1,500, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 years ago. One thing that I have learned as I've studied scripture, I've studied books and and just researched these things, we're just like them. (laughs) We're just like them. My son... Uh, we were riding home from youth group the other night and, and uh, he said, wow, dad, those guys back in Israel, they, they sure were stupid. You know, they, they, just didn't, they just didn't get it, did they? You know, they were disobedient, even though God had shown them all those crazy things, you know, and all those miracles. And I said, yeah, buddy, but we do the same thing every day for the same reasons. 
we disobey the Lord. For the same reasons we distrust in the Lord because we want to follow after our own uh, dictates of how we want to live our own lives. Those people weren't stupid. They're just like us. They're just like us. There, there are no differences really uh, of any substance between them and us, even though their 4,000 years have gone by. Um, we, all, uh, we all have these issues going on in our lives of, of sin, of selfishness, of just wanting to live our lives in the way that we want to rather than the way the Lord wants us to. Now, going back to the book of Deuteronomy itself, uh, many of you know it is the fifth book of what is called uh, by the Jews themselves the Torah, and that is the law, the law of Moses. Um, the Greeks called it the Pentateuch, and that's kind of what in the English Bible or uh, English-speaking Christians usually call it the Pentateuch rather than the Torah. Um, just because the Torah is more kind of reserved for uh, Hebrew and, and Jewish language. But um, it is the fifth book of those, those five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and then Deuteronomy, the final to round out the Pentateuch. Now, the word itself, Deuteronomy, if you see the, the dut there at the beginning, uh, anytime you see or hear that kind of do or dual, think of dual or duality or something like that along those lines, uh, many languages, the, the number two is do or due or um, um, I can't, what is Spanish? Duo? Dos, there you go. So it all kind of comes from that idea. And so it's the idea of the second law or the second giving or the second telling of the law. Um, and as we'll get into the book itself, what had happened at the Mount Sinai, uh, that first generation of the Hebrews who were coming out of the Exodus, uh, the law was given to Moses, and then Moses read it to the people, and he gave it to them. And he said, now you're, you must be obedient to these things. And they said, oh, yeah, we'll do it. Absolutely, we're, we're obedient. We'll do it. And uh, it didn't take them very long to, to stray away from those things and, and become disobedient to the thing that they had just said they would be obedient to. But it's the idea of the second time the law was given to the people. Now, of course, they had read it at other times, but it's the second time it was given to them as a charge. You know, this is the covenant that God is making with us, and you must obey these things that God is is telling us here. Now, 40 years have gone by uh, since the law was first given. And, And so now that first generation is all gone. They've all died off. They've all passed away. And, uh, and now we have a new generation. And just before they go into that land, Moses is about to, to go home to be with the Lord himself. And he says, okay, now let's go through this one more time. I want you guys to understand what God is charging us to do here. I want you to understand his nature, his character. These are the laws that he has given us and you must be careful to obey them. And so the second giving of the law is is what we call the book of Deuteronomy. Again, it's after the 40 years. We talked about that already. 40 years after that wandering period where they've all died off. Now, again, for those um, who just need a review or maybe you just don't know the Bible really well, what has happened to this point within the Bible? Well, first of all, the, if you go all the way back to Genesis 1-1, you have the creation account of, of the heavens and the earth, the creation account of man and all the animals and all those kind of things. And I'm not going to go into detail on this. Just be patient with me. Uh, but just a, a very quick overview. Uh, Tower of Babel, of course, probably one of the, the next big, huge uh, uh, points actually the flood of Noah I should have put the flood of Noah but flood of Noah Tower of Babel those are massive huge events because again they came down to disobedience man's disobedience uh, to God and uh, and so that ta- Tower of Babel incident those divided man into separate nations because they couldn't speak the same language anymore then God began to deal with individuals. He began to deal with a man named Abram. He later became Abraham. He began to talk to him and reveal himself to him and tell him about a land uh, that he's going to give him. He's going to have a child, and that child is going to be, you know, he's going to be the father of many nations, the nation of Israel itself. And all of the nations will be blessed as a result of the nation of Israel. Um, 
And so, of course, the ultimate outworking of that is the coming of the Messiah. The whole world will be blessed as a, re- as a result of a child who will come through the loins of Abraham. And that child, of course, is Jesus, the Messiah. And so you go down through the genealogies there a little bit. Isaac, his son, that was the promised son, Jacob. And then eventually you have 12 tribes. Joseph is, is sold into captivity into Egypt. And so we've already passed all those kind of things. 400 years go by, the children of Joseph and the children of these 12 tribes become slaves in Egypt. They were welcomed at at one time and and given a place to live, but eventually other kings take over Egypt and they become slaves there and, uh, and they are oppressed. And the Lord finally raises up Moses and he said, I want you to go down there and tell the Pharaoh to let my people go. I hear the cry of my people and I want them out of there. And I want you to go down and speak to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. And of course, this brings on the Exodus, uh, the crossing of the Red Sea, in addition to many, many incredible miracles that we see, the curses that are brought upon the nation of Egypt because they wouldn't let the people go because the Pharaoh's heart was hardened. And he said, no, I won't let your people go. Who is this God? I don't know who you're even talking about. And uh, I won't let him go. He's not my Lord and I won't let him go. And so many, many incredible miracles come as a result of the Exodus, the crossing of the Red Sea, and then eventually going to Mount Sinai. The law is given the, the two tablets of stone that God writes on with his own finger as he establishes the Ten Commandments and then other laws as well that go out and, and tell the people how they should live their lives. The Aaronic priesthood is set up at that time. That's where the book of Leviticus comes in, uh, where you have this um, uh, priesthood that is designed to um, to make sure that those laws are being adhered to. And also, if they are not being adhered to, the the sacrifices that are given as a result of falling short of God's law. And so all those things have already been instituted. Uh, they've, they've built a tabernacle where God's spirit is with them and he's traveling with them. But of course, as they travel, and we'll find out next week, it's only an 11-day journey from Mount Sinai up to the promised land. It's only 11 days. But by the time they get up there, their hearts have already, you know, given up on the whole deal because of the fear of the people in the land that they're supposed to go up and conquer. And so as a result, we have this this massive disobedience. The Lord says, all right, go in, take the land. Uh, Go in and, and don't worry, I'll fight your battles for you. And they send spies in there and the spies come back. Uh, Two of them say, it's great, man. Look at these grapes. You know, it's a land flowing with milk and honey. And then the other spies say, yeah, but there are giants in there. There are giants in there and they'll kick our butts and there's no way we're going in there. And so as a result of that, the people's hearts are discouraged. The people are discouraged and they say, no, we don't want to go. We don't want to trust God. And God says, okay, round one. (laughs) <laughs> go ahead, head out there into the wilderness and keep on doing donuts out there for the next 40 years. And, uh, and that's what happens. And, and again, as a result, 40 years, your, your life just drains away. You're not being used by the Lord in the way the Lord wants to use you. You're not living your life and, and bringing forth the fruit that God wants you to bring forth. You're not able to um, you know, just serve him in the way that he wants you to serve him. And as a result, you don't have the peace in your heart. You don't have the comfort of knowing that I'm walking in the ways of the Lord. And I don't have those blessings that come as a result of being obedient to him. And so it is a a real shame. And so the 40-year wandering takes place at that time. And so just to uh, round this out for tonight, the key aspects of Deuteronomy. Again, obedience to God's word. Now, they're at that point again, at the same place that they were 40 years earlier. It's a critical point. And Moses says, now, listen, guys, don't do what you did last time. Be obedient to God's word. Follow God's word and trust him. He will lead us into this land. Don't do what your fathers did. Be obedient to God's word. And then he gives us the consequences for that disbelief. And then he also gives us the blessings of the obedience. And so before we close here tonight, I want you to turn back to uh, chapter 20. 
8 of the book of Deuteronomy. What we have in the first 11 chapters is a reflective look back at what happened, what got them to this point. And then chapter 12 on through the rest of chapter 34, through the rest of the book, is prospective. You know, here's the history of what happened. Now, let's go forward and let's not do that again. Let's actually be obedient to God's word. And, and really just the encouragements, as, as uh, O.J. was saying, the exhortations to just follow God's word and, and do the things he's told us to do. What's going to happen if we do that? It says in verse 20, or chapter 28, verse 1, Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth, And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessings on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. And it goes on and on. He will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. And it just goes on and on in these blessings. Blessed, you will be blessed. And, you know, I don't know that it's fair for us as Christians to claim all of these things, but certainly there is a blessing that comes as a result of being obedient to God's word. And... um you know, I think he does bless us in those areas, but this is a a covenant that he made with these people. And, and, you know, you can go too far and say, well, you know, if we do these exact same things, you know, he's going to do the same thing in our nation. And, it, you know, you can take it a little bit too far, I think, but certainly we can look upon these things and say, you know, there's a blessing that comes from being obedient to God. He is going to bless our lives. He's going to bless our jobs. He's going to bless those areas of our lives, and we will be blessed as a result of obedience to him. But again, the, the caution there in verse 15, he says, but it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Blessed shall you be in the city and cursed shall be or I'm sorry, cursed shall you be in the city and cursed shall you be in the country. Cursed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Cursed shall be and cursed, curse, curse, curse. On and on and on and on and on on it goes for the rest of that chapter. So it's, um, you know, a a real caution there. Certainly that uh, we, if we choose to be disobedient to God's word, that our lives are not going to be anywhere near um, the place we want them to be. We're not going to be happy. As a Christian believer, you know, there's no more miserable place than to be walking in sin, to be walking in disobedient to the Lord. I know this firsthand, you know, when I was in the military, um, about the middle of my career, uh, I had been on shore duty for many years and, and uh, got really involved in church and started really serving in leadership and, and all those things because I wasn't going on deployments and... Uh, came time for me to go back on sea duty again. And, uh, you know, I just prayed, Lord, you know, keep me strong and don't let me fail and, and all those kind of things. And, uh, I did fail. I did go back and start drinking again and, and just partying and stuff while, while I was on deployments and things. And, uh, you know, I was so miserable, you know, when, when you're not a believer, you know, oh, ha, ha, that's great. let's get drunk, oh, you know, all that kind of crazy stuff. And sin is fun for a season, right, until you get hooked on it, and then you're in bondage and your life is miserable. 
But for a believer, there's no sense of sin being fun for a season. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's an amazing thing. Sin is, is bondage from the get-go as a believer. You know, when you've had that sense that the Lord is, you know, just uh, really working in your life and, and then you walk away from him and you become disobedient to him, you're miserable. And the Holy Spirit makes sure you're miserable. And it's not a good place to be. Trust me, don't go there. Um, but again, as a result of being obedient to his word, boy, the blessings just come through and, uh, he just showers us with those amazing blessings. And so, you know, in addition to all those kind of things, Jesus quoted from the book of Deuteronomy more than any other Old Testament book. I don't know if you knew that or not, but, uh, Jesus certainly saw the power of this book saw the power of this idea of obedience to God's word, and he spoke about it regularly in the Gospels. And we'll be quoting from him, obviously, as we go through. But, um, you know, I just want to throw this out there to you guys tonight as we begin the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, Are you being obedient to God's word right now? Are you walking in obedience to him? Are you trusting in him? And not looking to the world to provide your comfort and to provide your protection and to provide your peace and all those other things. The Lord wants to be your protection. He wants to be the one that fights the battles for you. He wants to be the one who comes and brings you that comfort and that peace within your heart. And if you're seeking it anywhere else, you're going to be miserable as a believer. I can just tell you that. So seek him this week and uh, just a little bit of homework for you. Read chapter one of Deuteronomy and then we'll jump right back into it next week. So let's pray. And again, uh, we want to bring up some uh, folks to just lead us in a little bit more worship of the Lord as we wait upon him. I just ask that you would just seek the Lord and just say, Lord, if there's any area of my life, I'm in disobedience. You, You pointed out to me. If there's any area of my life that is unrighteous, point it out to me so that I can confess that sin. I can be done with that sin and, and really uh, turn my heart to seek you in a more uh, a greater way. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this amazing book. Lord, we thank you for the book of Deuteronomy and, and just the practical truth that it has for us here in the time that we live in. Lord, um, just show us how to be obedient believers, obedient followers, disciples of you. Father, we ask that um, as we study this book, Lord, that it would just convict us, Lord, that it would just bring change into our lives, not just uh, emotional or temporary change, but, Father, lasting change that only comes from uh, your Holy Spirit convicting and uh, just molding us into the image of your Son. We praise you for these things, Lord. We ask that tonight as we just begin to wait upon you, Lord, as we begin to worship you, Father, that you would just meet us here, Father, that your spirit would fall upon us, Lord, that you would just uh, speak to our hearts through the gifts that you've poured out upon the people in this fellowship. And Father, we are eager to hear your voice. We are eager to see your face. As Moses said, we want to see your glory Father, show us every bit of the glory that you are willing to show us tonight, we pray. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.